everybody and welcome. Today we're going to talk about something I haven't had on my radar yet. How far should Kitten Space Agency be allowed to copy Kerbal Space Program? Are the developers at Rocketworks stealing intellectual property by making KSA? Or are they finally giving us fans the technical foundation our beloved space simulation game would have deserved from the start? And is there maybe a broader discussion to be had about game developers getting, let's say, inspired by other titles? The idea for this video was triggered by a social media post I came across. It's on a site I don't want to promote for ethical reasons, but the gist of it is that KSA is basically ripping off another developer's work by completely duplicating a previous game, in this case Kerbal Space Program. While this is more of an opinion piece, we're going to look at the current state of Kitten Space Agency development in the future, and there's also videos about space history and various space travel concepts on this channel. So if that is something that interests you, hit that subscribe button and become one of the more than 100,000 people that have already entered the Shadow Zone. First things first. If you haven't heard about Kitten Space Agency, it is a game developed by Studio Rocketworks and it aims to be a spiritual successor to Kerbal Space Program, since the official sequel was unceremoniously cancelled by publisher Take-Two after a less than ideal start into early access the year prior. Rocketworks had actually pitched to develop KSP2, but the decision was made to instead give the project to Star Theory back in 2017. If you want to know more, I have an hour-long video about the troubled history of KSP2. Link is up top and in the description. After KSP2 development was shut down, Rocketworks immediately jumped into the fray and announced they were working on a space game, basically trying to do what the latter failed to do, deliver a sound technical foundation for a space simulation game. When asked what the gameplay goal for this new game called Kitten Space Agency was, Rocketworks CEO Dean Hall said, and I paraphrase a little, do KSP, then go from there. They never made a secret out of the fact that they wanted to recreate the same gameplay that was the foundation for Kerbal Space Program in KSA. And from what I've seen from the mostly positive reactions, nobody had anything against that, especially since a lot of the original KSP developers, including the creator himself, Harvester, were on board with the project. Meanwhile, the official Kerbal intellectual property has been bought by a private equity firm, which is now sitting on it. There's also a video I did on that, as before, link is up top and in the description. But let's try to get to the initial question methodically. What gameplay did KSP provide that KSA might rip off? To me, those core mechanics are building rockets, flying rockets, decently realistic orbital physics, and crude exploration. Feel free to comment if you think something should be added to or removed from this list. Let's start with the building. While not as comprehensive a rocket building game, Spore, released in 2008, three years before the first public build of Kerbal Space Program, offered players to build their own spaceships. There are generally a few parallels between Spore's builder and the one in KSP. There are the pod categories on the left, your preview in the center, and you can move and rotate stuff around on the fly. Wanna see for yourself? There are 16-year-old videos in horrible 240p quality available on the official Spore YouTube channel. I would take the KSP editor over Spore's all day, but this just proves this specific gameplay mechanic was not really invented with KSP. Regarding flying rockets, there have been a lot of games where you were able to fly spaceships, mostly action-focused games. But if we stick to inside the atmosphere, Microsoft's Flight Simulator has been around since the early 1980s. There was also Rendezvous, a space shuttle simulation released for the Apple II back in 1982, which also included docking to a space station. Regarding orbital simulations, there is Universe Sandbox, first released in 2008, 17 years ago, and now on its second iteration. And when we talk about exploration with your crew, basically any open world game ever released had that. Don't get me wrong. That's not a knock on KSP or the creativity of its creator, far from it. 
While the game's mechanics by themselves were not new, the combination of all of them into a new package, and of course the inclusion of the funny little green kerbals, resulted in something really special. What I think is happening is that basically every idea you have, somebody else already had it. But the question is, who acts on their ideas and how do they implement them? If we're being honest, Case P2 in many ways was just Case P with partially more and partially less features. The burn during time warp feature was great, so was the much larger vehicle assembly building and the ability to build multiple sub-assemblies at the same time, and the music was fantastic. Unfortunately, there were a lot of things wrong with KSP2, which in the end made it a worse game than KSP, mainly because the developers didn't get a chance to finish it. If you're watching this, you're probably a fan of the original like myself. Most of us wanted just a few improvements in a sequel. Improved performance, less bugs and updated graphics. And KSA shapes up to deliver on all of these items right out of the gate. At least from the limited information that we have. Still waiting on that first alpha release to come out. When I read that social media post accusing KSA of being just a KSP ripoff, I personally thought it was uncalled for. If they succeed with this game, Rocketworks will deliver where Case P2 failed to do so, albeit without the Kerbals. They'll be giving the fans what they were hoping for ever since the sequel's announcement trailer was released back in 2018. The entire argument of one game stealing from another is a bit of a moot point though, isn't it? Every first-person shooter can trace their lineage back to Wolfenstein 3D, even if their characters are not shouting Mein Leben when being shot. All titles that follow after it were just a variation on the theme. But I think it's very important for developers to acknowledge when their new title was inspired by another game. It would be a completely different discussion if Rocketworks never mentioned KSP and acted like KSA was completely their brainchild from start to finish. And so far the reception in the community overall has been very positive. At least that's my view on everything. Let me know in the comments down below what your take on this is. And if you really like what I'm doing here on this channel, you can support me on Patreon or by becoming a YouTube member. If you choose one of the higher tiers, your name will show up here, together with all of these wonderful people. Thank you so much for your support. Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, as the saying goes. But since we established that some of the original KSP developers are working on KSA, are they therefore flattering themselves? That makes it a bad thing, right? All right, off to the comments. Let's chat about all of that. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies. The links are in the description. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.